Good day, everyone. We are Dolomite. We are the group assigned for the commodity system analysis of the commodity Philippine Main Group. My group mates and I will present the commodity system analysis based on this framework. Agribusiness is one of the most important sectors in our economy that do not just aim for profitability but also sustainability and even helping its stakeholders to improve their livelihood. As an agricultural country, agribusiness plays an important role in supporting and developing our present status of agriculture. Agribusiness players are working together from utilization of inputs up to implementing policies to help improve the sector. The commodity system analysis follows the agribusiness as a system approach. Thus, it will be anchored to the agribusiness framework illustrated by Dr. Garcia. As you can see in the slide, agribusiness framework consists of subsystems that are interdependent and interrelated where the output of one sector can be used as the input of the other sector and supporting the agribusiness activities is also part of the system. This commodity analysis aimed to explore the status and present the investment and entry points of the main commodity in the Philippines and in the global value chain in order to build conclusions and formulate a recommendation for the opportunities to upgrade the country as the assessment completed. The data collected emerged from the reputable resources such as Philippine Statistics Authority and the published articles regarding the subject, which are all well cited in the references. The scope and limitation of this analysis are Philippines agricultural sectors as well as other leading countries' mango producers for comparison and analyzing the implementation of future innovation and improvement for Philippine mango commodity sector. Next. The flow of the presentation will be as follows. So now here is the overview. Historically, mangoes first moved towards Southeast Asia from India. In the early 16th century, mango sourced from India were introduced to the Philippines through Spain as a result of all the Spanish and Portuguese voyages happening at this time, which made for easy distribution of the fruit. Growing mangoes locally soon became the norm because of the favorable Philippine climate. Cultivation of mango has been in practice for centuries, and the fruit continues to remain in high demand worldwide. Aside from being the Philippines' national fruit, it is also the national fruit of India, Pakistan, and Haiti. The following countries are those which are key players of the mango industry within the international market. Bangladesh joined the market for mango export in 2015, where their local market was once dominated by chemically treated mangoes. The geographical indication tag from the World Intellectual Property Organization was awarded to them for their Himsagar mango variety. India dominates over 50% of the total global mango production in the international market. In India, the mango is regarded as a high value cash crop and holds cultural as well as spiritual significance to the Indian people. Pakistan supplies mainly to the United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic this year, Pakistan faced a loss of almost one-third of their total exports, estimating to about 30,000 metric tons. Their local market surplus also caused an overall drop in mango prices because of the low demand. China is the third-ranking mango producer in the international market, and their sales are mainly domestic, with the foreign market being deemed as auxiliary. The bulk of Chinese mango cultivation happens in South China. Thailand is the leading mango producer in Southeast Asia. Sustainability is an important factor to the Thai mango industry and mango cultivars receive government support. The mango is eaten during all its development stages, from green to ripe. The nutritional content of a ripe mango differs per mango variety. Despite this, you can rest assured that the mango is a general good source of vitamin C, fiber, sugar, and minerals such as potassium. The input sector consists of the major inputs, inputs used in mango production that are mostly sourced out within the country. Furthermore, the most significant industries under the input sector of the mango commodity are the fertilizer and pesticide industry. Next.
The primary mango varieties in the Philippines are Carabao o Manggang Kalabao, Kachamita or Indian Mango, Pahutan, and Pico. The Carabao Mango is a well-known variety not only domestically but also internationally as it is listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the world's sweetest mango. Next. In producing the commodity, several inputs are needed such as planting materials, fertilizers, pesticides, agricultural labor, and many more. Aside from these, climatic, soil, slope, and elevation requirements must be met too in order for trees to grow well and produce its maximum yield. Next. The mango trees should be grown in an area with distinct wet and dry season, environmental temperature that ranges from 22 to 34 degrees Celsius, well-drained soil of any type, moderate slope and elevation of not greater than 1,200 meters. Moreover, the major input used in mango production is the fertilizer. As we can see in the table, approximately 30% of the total cash cost is contributed by the cost of fertilizer. Uh, urea is one of the most common fertilizers used in mango production. Next. Aside from fertilizers applied in the soil, one of the inputs used in mango production is flower inducer, which helps in making mangoes available all year round. The flower inducer discovered by the national scientist Dr. Ramon C. Barba in 1974 helped overcome the problems of growing mangoes, which includes being seasonal. Next. Mango trees are susceptible to attack of insect pests and diseases in all stages of their life. Example of some mango pests are the mango tree borders, atrapnose, sooty, sooty mold, and mango fruit fly. Hence, Pesticides are used by growers to control these pests or else the quantity and quality of their produce will be negatively affected. Fortunately, these inputs can be sourced out within the country. For example, the source of urea of the Department of Agriculture comes from La Filipina and the mango seedlings are sourced from companies like Philippine Mango Seedling Farm Corporation that provides the best varieties of carabao mangoes in the country. And now let's move on to farm production of mango commodity. Next. There are numerous factors that add to the mango production trend, and these are inadequate organ management, rainfall, typhoons, insect pests, and diseases. Most significant explanation is the lack of strategic and long-term research and development efforts. It, about 885,000 metric, metric tons of mango produced in the country in 2014 with a 53.13% share and the largest production came from the zone. Around 2009 and 2014, the production area and yields were largely stable with about 188,000 hectare and 4 to 4.7 metric tons per hectare. The production of mango decreased with an annual rate of 5.2% and the area cultiv cultivated for mango decreases annually. On the other hand, the number of bearing trees rose at an average annual rate of 0.9%. As of now, in Western Visaya, Central Luzon, and Ilocos region, there are just under 7 million trees planted on some 158,000 hectares. And as of 2018, Ilocos region has a larger percent share with 23.5% to the total mango production. And still, Ilocos region remained the top producer of mango in 2019 to 2020 with 23% of overall national production. In the Philippines, the per capita availability of mango is declining, closely matching the decreasing production pattern. About 17% went to export in 2012 with the fall in demand. Per capita intake varied from the available mango supply from 1.39 from region A to 4.80 kg from Caraga with a national average of 3.49 kg. And as of 2018 of December, Metro Manila data was reported that the Carabao mango has the retail price of 180 pesos per kilogram. 
and this indicates uh, a rise from previous 140 pesos per kilogram in November 2018. And Metro Manila Info averaging 110,000 pesos per kilogram from December 2013 to December 2018. And now let's move on to farming system and cultural management practices of mango commodity. First, we have protein, and it is done by spraying with the use of potassium nitrate, calcium nitrate, or sodium nitrate to induce flowering any time of the year. Second, fruit bagging. Fruit bagging, sucking, it is a sucking of mangoes utilizing newspaper and pages of phone registries, while other utilize exceptionally designed bags. And the third one is the mango pest and disease management. Mango suffers from multiple diseases at all stages of its life. And currently, seed fly manifestation is the major problem of mango producers. Mangos, mango fruit should bag at 40 days after flowering induction or spray insecticide for 55 days. Some mango growers use alternatives to avoid seed fly manifestation using mouse glue drops beside the mango fruits. Second problem in mango production is the damage of mango pulp weevil. Prune the tree ideally with open center pruning to allow the tree canopy to penetrate the sunlight because weevils are destroyed by sunlight. Lastly, anthracnose is a serious mango fruit post-harvest problem in the Philippines. Add protective or systematic fungicide to protect inflorescence against blossom blight and fruit rot infection or growing fruits. And we have post-harvest management of mango commodity. First, we have trimming, and trimming is the removal of the stem left on the fruit, the la, the, la the, the, the processing of fresh latex from the fruit, and next is the sorting and grading. Mangoes are randomly graded after harvest A as class A or have a good quality of, for export and class B for the domestic market. And lastly, the hot water treatment, and it is post-harvest therapy against the described diseases. Mangos can be sexually and asexually propagated. In grafting, compatibility of the rootstock and the scion is essential for good growth, rich yield, and soil adaptability. They are planted in deep soil to give room for their extensive roots, and this allows the tree for good growth. Planting distance is also considered an important factor of a productive mango tree. However, this tree can only thrive in tropical areas and it is not able to tolerate areas with cold temperatures. Flower induction helps the mango trees to flower and bear fruits throughout the year. Proper planting practices such as following the right depth and space required by mango trees are essential in mango production. Application of fertilizer and adequate amount of water enhances the quality of mango fruits and it also increases its yield. For the processing sector, next. The mango commodity in the Philippines are composed of quite a few processors that operate mostly on small to medium scale. According to Philippine Mango Industry Foundation Incorporated, there are a total of 28 companies that process mango products here in the Philippines, 39% of which are located in the national capital region. 12 of those said companies produce dried mango products, while the other 16 focus on the processing of mango puree. Next. The process involved in the production of dried mango products is illustrated in the shown diagram below. First, it undergoes the process of mango selection where fresh and blemish-free mangoes with 80 to 90% maturity mm -hmm. and as a high content of dry matter with smaller stones are selected for processing and transferred to the conveyor belt after cutting both ends of each mango. Then, washing is done where mangoes are then transferred to the air bubble washing machine to remove any dirt and pesticide residue. Next is, is that for peeling and coring, washed mangoes are peeled through a multifunctional fruit peeling machine to avoid browning of mangoes caused by tanning in the peel, then the mango stones are then removed. And through cutting, mangoes are cut in thick slices about 8 to 10 millimeter each and in lengthwise. Then for blanching, 
where it will be processed in hot air about 70 to 75 degrees Celsius at first, then 60 to 65 degrees Celsius before the process finishes is used to dry mangoes. It removes the water in mango slices and the required water content of the dried mangoes and is approximately 15% to 18%. Hot circulation air fruit drying machine is used in the process. And after that, it will be packed so that it could be commercialized. Whereas for the mango puree processing, the process is just quite similar as compared to the dried mango processing, where just drying, cutting, peeling, and coring is just omitted. And it is ended with the process of pulping, as you can see, using a mesh with 0.5 millimeter in size, mesocarp passed through it. The process will produce the puree. Next. A total of 5,838 metric tons of mango processed products was exported in the year of 2017, lesser than the amount of raw mango exports amounting to 12,827 in the same year. As we can see, export of raw mango commodity is greater than the, the amount of processed mango products being exported in the past few years. Let's now move on to the marketing sector. Next. In 2018, the Philippines ranks as the 11th most mango producing country in the world. The number one country for mango production is India, followed by China, then Thailand. Next. The mango production in the Philippines follows a dual distribution market structure. The commodity will start in a farm and mangoes will be sold directly to wholesaler retailers before it reaches to the consumer. The farmers di directly sell their commodity to exporters or consumers. Next. The figure shows the price movement of mango from East Visayas and Mindanao to a market in China. The grower sells the mangoes for 9 to 20 pesos per kilogram to the viajeros. Mm -hmm. The viajeros will then sell the commodity to the local wholesaler for 11 to 50 pesos and 15 to 28 pesos per kilogram for the exporters. The exporters sell the rejected mango from, to the processing companies and sell them for 12 to 14 pesos per kilogram. Among the popular varieties of mangoes in the Philippines, Carabao mango is most competitive in the global market with 81.2% sh shares in the total production. However, the Philippine mango industry has not been able to maintain the export position since the mango industry has limited technologies, especially in packaging, causing the inability to meet the standards of international market. Next. The average cost of mango production for the year 2014 is 18 pesos per kilogram. The production cost per hectare can be as high as 73,000, including agricultural input, labors, and fees. Non-cash expenses consisting of 7% of the net bill include employed labor, rents, tenants, and harvesters. Next. The three popular varieties of mangoes in the Philippines are Carabao, Pico, and Indian mango. Among these, the Carabao mango is only variety being exported and is therefore the most widely cultivated variety. Mangoes are sourced from the provinces of Batangas, Cebu, Davao City, Iloilo, Pang and Pangasinan, and then sent to their corresponding market. The Philippines has respectable credibility for its mango quality to over 40 countries, including the United States of America, Canada, United Kingdom, Japan, Hong Kong, Korea, Singapore, Australia, and Switzerland. Let's move on to the last sector, the agri-services. Next. Government and private institutions are currently supporting the commodity system. Research and development initiatives for advancing the mango industry are commonly handled by the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development, DOSTP card, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and Department of Agriculture's Agricultural Training Institute or API. For trade, the Department of Trade and Industry supports the growers in channeling their products in the market. In Mindanao, 
the United Mindanao Fresh Mango Producer Council was established to create policies that will ensure in meeting the standards needed for the mangoes to be exported in Japan. While the One Mindanao Mango Industry Council was established to carry and unite the hopes and dreams of mango producers in the region. The only problem is that there is no separate association that handles mango commodity in the Philippines as its sole priority on a national level. The Department of Agriculture created a roadmap for the mango commodity. They developed programs and projects as well as conduct research for the improvement of the commodity system. Next. The programs and strategies they created aim to increase the mango production, consumption, and export of new and better mango products. The Department of Agriculture designated specific agencies to lead in the implementation of programs, such as Bureau of Plant Industry, Department of Agriculture Bureau of Agricultural Research, Filmec, and many more. Below are some of the programs included in the roadmap. Mango Rehabilitation, Food Production Insurance Program, community-based processing or post-harvest facilities, and support for GAP certification of mango farms. Next. To make this viable, investment strategies were created and implemented. The area of concern for these investment strategies are the maintained financial support from government, management practices, and clearance for sanitary and phytosanitary. Based on the benchmarking of Philippines, Thailand, and Mexico, the following were concluded. Thailand and Mexico's policies were successful and contributed greatly to improving agricultural production as well as raising farmers' incomes. On the other hand, the Philippines Agriculture and Fisheries Modernization Act of 1997 was not completely adopted, largely due to a shortage of support for its mandates. In addition, there are reward and subsidy packages for farmers in other countries that are virtually absent in the Philippines. Thailand and Mexico have invested in ongoing research and growth, including the breeding and selection of new varieties, appropriate for their growing conditions, and suitable for a more effective and profitable high-density production method than the conventional production system. Now let's move on to the integrated analysis starting with the input sector. Philippines' major advantage in the mango industry is its wide availability of sources. Its climate and topographical location are ideal for mango production. However, the lack of government support in the input sector affects the farmer's capability to afford the increasing cost of pesticide and fertilizers. For the opportunity, research and development government and private institutions aim at production of new and high yielding varieties. The existence of unaccredited fertilizers and pesticides should be supervised by the Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority or the FPA. For the farm production sector, the farm sector strength is the mango commodity which has year-round production and is prominent in most areas of the Philippines. However, low adoption of technologies, lack of technical, know lack of technical knowledge, and agricultural practices lack of post-harvest facilities, high transportation costs, and being susceptible to insect and disease-causing pests are the uh, cause, a, cause a change in the yield of mango production and decreased exports for the demand of fresh and processed mangoes. The crop statistics of the Philippines from 2014 to 18 identify the decreasing of cultivated land in the Philippines from around 188,000 hectares in 2014 to 185,000 hectares in 2018. However, the number of bearing trees, on the other hand, rose marginally by 0.1% from 9.46 million bearing trees in 2017 to 9.47 million trees in 2018. Nevertheless, the opportunities of the mango industry's farm sector could possibly have increased exports demand for fresh and processed mangoes, development of machineries, and equipment for more efficient and effective farming as well as availability of additional sustainable areas for expansion. Threats in the farm sector include adverse effects of climate change, weather change, emergence of new pests due to high reliance on chemical sprays. For the processing sector, the majority of processed products derived from mango are commonly food products. 
Um, these vary from canned and frozen slices, puree, juices, and nectar for processed green mango and dried products for processed ripe mangoes. There is an abundant existence of mango processing industries here in our country, making the export for the processed products one of its strengths. On the other hand, its weaknesses are mostly due to the lack of product differentiation, making it hard to keep up with the international market. Lastly, there is an opportunity to utilize the byproduct of mango to produce high value products like bioethanol, but the strict FPS standards that makes it hard to keep up with the global market. For the marketing sector, the major problem besetting is the lack of technology for packaging and the variance of product differentiation, which make it difficult to compete with other leading countries on mango exports. Its strength mostly depends on its close proximity to export destinations. There is also an opportunity to boost the market of mango by improving the packaging and quality of the market. For the support services sectors, government organizations, as mentioned, DOST, Picard, UPLB, DAATI, and DTI, are continuously supporting at the commodity through implementation of development projects, programs, and researches. However, there is no current organization that handles only the mango in national level, on a national level to help in boosting the industry and create coordination between stakeholders. There is a lack of coordination also between government institutions, such as the DA and DTI, in planning and implementing strategies to improve the commodity. Furthermore, there is a coordinated effort lacking between industry stakeholders. Hence, the opportunity for support subjector is the consolidation of industry stakeholders. To add, the sector is also open to investment opportunities for the implementation of development programs and projects. Moreover, the decrease in the allocated budget of the government for institutions supporting this commodity are a threat to the support subsector. Now we move on to the conclusion and recommendation. Next. The commodity system analysis for Mingo ended with assessments on the sector of the Mingo industry that needs room for, for improvement of the overall potential of this commodity. Since Mingo is one of the top priority commodities here in our country and is very abundant throughout the seasons, there are a lot of opportunities to boost the Mingo industry by resolving these issues stated. First is the lack of institutional support and organizational coordination. Increasing prices of farm inputs makes it hard for the mango industry to thrive and the lack of cooperation between farmers and cooperatives was also a concern because groups are not prioritized and tend to function independently, resulting in higher production costs or market rates. Next is the lack of technical know-how. There is a lack of knowledge of mango growers about the proper management practices, especially in post-harvesting of the mango commodity. Due to the lack of support from different, different institutions, farmers are not able to adjust and update their cultivation practices to meet the current standards of the market. Next. Next is the lack of product differentiation and technological advancements. There are quite a few mango processors in the country and the products that they produce are similar to each other. Most of them produce only dried mangoes and mango puree. There is also a lack in technological advancements that will allow processors to produce more processed products from Mingo that could enter the global market, such as high-valued products. Next is the susceptibility of Mingo to insects, pests, and diseases. Mingo is prone to the attacks of insects, pests, and diseases, which lead to lower quantity and quality of yields. Hence, growers depend on chemical sprays to control them. This results in increased costs which greatly affect the revenue of the growers. Furthermore, excessive usage of chemical sprays could be a hazard to both the environment and the workers. Next. Last for the conclusion is meeting the global standards. Mango is an exportable commodity. However, the strict global standards make it hard for the mango growers and processors to penetrate the global market. Since mango is prone to insects, pests, and diseases, it is hard to keep the fruit blemishes free, which is one of the criteria of some countries. In addition, due to the lack of mandate funding from the Philippine AFMA or Agricultural Fisheries Modernization Act was not thoroughly implemented to dramatically boost agricultural production, particularly the mango industry. 
although it was a priority crop in the Philippines. As a consequence, the Philippines mango industry is unable to fulfill the demands of SPS requirements or legislation to reach foreign markets. For the recommendation, the mango industry must have a strong con and consistent strategy that will demonstrate and con the continuous progress of the industry and enhance global competitiveness in manufacturing, distribution, and marketing by integrating industry efforts and providing stakeholders with a safe environment and opportunity. Coordination of public and private institutions for better implementation of strategies through collaboration. Excessive usage of chemicals is one of the major problems in the mango industry. The development of resistant varieties of mangoes would help the farmers to lessen the use of chemicals. This could be done by the DOSP. Next. The Department of Agriculture should educate the mango growers about the integrated pest management and provide them with the necessary technology for the early detection of pests. Hence, educating them through seminars and training conducted by support institutions such as Department of Agriculture, DOSP, and universities that conduct studies related to mango will be helpful. Next. Proper dissemination of information about management and cultural practices from institutions would greatly help the stakeholders involved in boosting the mango industry, paying attention to the rising mango product market prices and development of advanced equipment and machinery may empower farmers to continue harvesting mangoes on their designated area. It would also assist them to better take care of their crops. The government passes several regulatory measurements on commodities and how to improve them, but the implementation is slow and sometimes unsustainable. Thailand and Mexico are successful in improving their agricultural production for they were able to successfully implement policies, which includes increasing the incomes of the farmers. In the Philippines, the 1997 Philippines AFMA is not yet completely adopted. This should help the agricultural sector to become modernized in order to compete in the international market. It was mentioned that the problem why it is not yet completely adopted is due to lack of support. Hence, full government support must be provided in order for this policy to be implemented. Funds should be allocated properly and government agencies should work together to accomplish the implementation of the said policy. Next, conducting research and developing resistant varieties of mango would help the farmers to lessen the use of chemicals. Early detection of pre presence of pests would help the mango growers implement control method based on the IPM such as cultural, physical, biological, and chemical control methods with the chemical control as the last resort. This would help them to um, avoid relying in mainly on chemical sprays. Technology such as artificial intelligence could help in detecting the presence of insect pests and diseases. Specifically, the major category of IA or AI rather that specializes in detection of pests is predictive analytics analytics that uses machines together with a satellite to forecast weather. It is quite expensive but could be lessened through partnership with existing government institutions that focus on weather forecasts like the OST Pagasa. This innovation will provide long-term benefits to not only to the mango growers but to private institutions that are needed. To make the recommendations feasible, the figure below shows the suggested framework of, ma of mango commodity. In the input sector, the coordinated effort of private institutions, DOSP and DA to conduct studies on how to lessen the use of inputs, especially chemical sprays, together with the in cooperation of BOI and contact growers can help the sector to improve. For um, the farm production sector, struggles with the current farm practices would be solved through the help of the DA bar, DOST, and private companies by conducting studies to improve the production practices of growing mangoes. For the processing sector, the, the industrial corporation and DOST should come up with the new processed mango 
products by using the fresh mango or its byproducts. The FDA and DTI should be responsible for approving the new products to be introduced to the market. Lastly, for marketing, the DTI, private institutions, DA, and MSME should work together to successfully market the product both domestically and internationally. And that ends our discussion for commodity system analysis of Philippine Mango. And for further inquiries, you could, you could email PR Gonzalez at upedu.ph. Thank you.